Hello all, my name is Krish Naik and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about the basic differences between generative AI versus AI agents versus agentic AI. Now, this is one of the most trending topics that is currently going on and it is necessary that you need to have your understanding very much clear when you are specifically working in all the specific topics. Okay. So one by one, we will try to understand about each and every topics that I've actually mentioned over here. We'll go step by step. Okay. So first thing is that I hope you may be knowing large language models. Okay. You may be knowing about large image models also, right? So let's say that I'll also go ahead and write large image models. When we talk about large language models or large image model, these models are actually very huge models, right? These are like huge models, bigger models, right? It can be of billions of parameters and they're trained with huge amount of data, right? This data that it is specifically used to train this model is huge. So you may have seen various models like Llama 3. You may have been seeing OpenAI models, right? From GPT-4 to GPT-4 mini. Many, many different models are there and these models are specifically trained with huge amount of data. And at the end of the day, all these particular models are generating what are they basically doing they're generating new content right generating new content now when we talk about generating new content these models can probably generate new images it can generate new text it can generate video frames it can generate anything as such right audio it can also generate audio right and it can also generate videos. So I've written each and everything about over here, right? So here, what this LLM is basically doing, since it is trained with huge amount of data, in short, it is basically generating new content whenever we try to give any kind of input, right? If I say, hey, please generate a new image related to agentic AI. So this LLM model, it is, if it has that multi-model capabilities, it will be able to generate that particular image or video, whatever specific things we require. Whenever we talk in this specific way, this is something related to generative AI. Okay, so this is something related to generative AI, right? Now, when we say, hey, uh, let's go ahead and build a generative AI application wherein we create a chatbot, okay? And that chatbot should be able to do this specific uh, task wherein the main aim is generating new content. You can definitely do it, right? So there we specifically say, hey, we are specifically working in generative AI applications, right? Here, the most important thing is that there's some few properties that everybody should keep in mind, right? Whenever we talk about generative AI application, these are specifically reactive, okay? Reactive. There is this word that we use, which we basically say it as reactive. Now, what does this basically reactive uh, mean, right? See. In order to work with this LLM models, right, we definitely have to write some kind of prompts, okay, prompts. And based on this particular prompt, this LLM model will generate new content. This is really important to understand. Now, what does this prompt basically means? This prompt is just like some sentence where we specify something and we tell the LLM to behave in that way. I may say, hey, that, uh, hey, please try to uh, act as a data scientist and take an interview for me, right? So I that is a kind of prompt, that is a kind of instruction that I'm actually giving to the LLM model, right? So here, the most important thing with respect to the generative AI content, uh, generative AI application is that, obviously, you will be having some kind of models, LLM models, LIM models, multi-model, right? Along with these models, we specifically write prompts, right? Like how this particular LLM model should be behaving and that is how it will go ahead and generate the new content, okay? So this is with respect to the generative AI applications, right? Here, uh, there are a lot of different, different kind of libraries. There are libraries like Langgraph, right? There are libraries like Langchain, which you can specifically use and you can get started with, right? Langchain. There are different, different libraries like, let's say, Llama Index, Llama Index, right? If you don't want to go ahead and use this, you can also go ahead and use Grok. Grok also has a specific set of code, or you can also go ahead and use OpenAI code in order to probably go ahead and start working and developing generative AI applications, okay? Now, this is one of the thing, okay? 
Now, the next two topics that we are specifically going to discuss about is something called as AI agents and agentic AI. And this is super important right now because the thing that we work on, right, agentic AI application, it is trending in every field. People are thinking that how they can automate the entire complex task, the entire workflow with the help of agentic AI application and obviously bring human feedback in between them. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and discuss about this. And I hope I have already made a video related to generative AI. I have developed so many different videos from Langchain to LangGraph. You can definitely go ahead and watch. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and discuss about the second thing, which is nothing but the second category that we are going to focus on is AI agents versus agentic AI. Versus agentic AI. Now, people do think that AI agents and agentic AI are one and the same, but it is not like that. Okay. So here, just please focus on for the next 10 minutes, because I'm going to explain each and everything that you really need to understand. And that is how you'll be able to understand between what is the basic difference between AI agents and agentic AI. Okay. Now let's say that I have some kind of LLMs. Okay. So let's say, and, and all these places, LLM is the most important thing, right? Because LLM is something that will be acting like an AI agent. It can act like an AI agent. It can also work in an agentic AI application. Okay. And it will, it will be very important how this AI agent is different when compared to the LLM also. Okay. So let's say that I have a specific LLM. Okay. And now this LLM can be any model. Okay. Let's, let's consider that it is, it is some model that we are going to use from Grok. It can be Llama 3. We are using this specific model. Okay. Now you know that all these LLM or LIM models, they're trained with some specific past data. Okay. They don't have like, let's say if I ask this particular LLM, Hey, what is the news for today? Or Hey, or who won this particular IPL match between this and this? Like, let's say Bangalore is going to happen, uh, have some matches uh, tomorrow or today if it has, right? And LLM will not know the result because it is not connected to the internet. Okay. So in that kind of scenario, whenever I ask this particular question, the LLM will not be able to give an output to us. Okay. Obviously it will not be able to give because it does not have that specific information. Now this is one major disadvantage of LLM, right? Yes. LLM will be able to generate new content. These models will be able to generate the new content, but what about the current information? Okay. It will not be able to give you, right? Let's say that I'm going to ask some specific information of a company. Obviously this LLM will not be trained with that company data because the company data will be private to that company itself, right? So that way also that LLM will not be able to give you that unless and until it is connected to some kind of external database or external data source. This is just one example. Now what is basically happening is that as soon as I asked a question, Hey, who won this particular match within RCB or any other place, uh, any other, um, any other team that happened today, it will not be able to give you the output. So what it will be dependent on, it will be dependent on the third party source. Let's say there is one third party source I will consider in this particular scenario. I will just go ahead and connect it to some kind of database. Okay. Let's say one of the data source is something called as Tabli. I will go ahead and write Tabli. So if you don't know about Tabli, it provides you some kind of internet search. Okay. It, you, you can use that particular API. You can write this specific wrapper and you can probably go ahead and write this. Now the question arises, how this LLM is basically going to call this Tabli API? Now there is one very important property. If you're learning Langchain or LangGraph, any of the specific libraries, there is a concept of something called as tool call, tool call. Okay. Tool call. Now what is this tool call? Let's say that if the LLM is not able to provide the response for this particular input, it will keep on looking for external things that will be able to handle this particular input. Now in this particular case, when I ask the input saying that, Hey, what is the current news? What is the current news for this specific date? That is today's date. The LLM will not be able to give the answer. So the LLM will look for whether it is connected to any third party APIs, third party APIs or data source from which I will be able to get this kind of information. So that is where it will be making the specific tool call. Okay. It will be making the specific tool call. Now this tool call will be something like this. The tool call will be made and based on this, I will be getting a response. Okay. I'll be getting a response. 
Now the as soon as the LLM made this tool call, the it got this specific response. So this is my request and this is my response. Okay. This is my response. And as soon as I got the response, the LLM is smart enough to finally summarize that particular output, uh, that response and give you the output. And this is what I'm actually looking for. Okay. Now you need to really understand over here the kind of task that is happening, right? A request is going, I'm getting the information, I'm getting giving back the response. This is basically happening by an AI agent, just a single AI agent. I can consider this as an AI agent. Okay. Here my main aim is that I have asked an input saying that, hey, give me the some current information about uh, today AI news. I really want to see for uh, this particular date AI news, which my LLM was not able to do it. So what it has done is that the LLM is smart enough to understand which tool to probably call and based on this tool call functionality it is calling this and it is getting the response. So this is a specific task. Okay. And this task is basically solved by this Tavli, okay, Tavli, which is responsible for the internet search. So this task can be considered as an AI agent, okay, for a specific task, we have defined this, okay, very simple definition, okay. So for a specific task, we are able to probably go ahead and call this and we are getting the response. Now the question rises, now the question rises, Krish, then what is agentic AI? AI agents I've understood, okay, fine. For a specific task, I'm calling something from the LLM, right? The LLM is responsible for making that tool call and getting the output and summarizing the output and giving it over here. Here also we can add the prompt. Here also once I get the response, I can add the prompt and based on that I can summarize the output. I can do that, okay? But this is only for one kind of task. Now if I talk about agentic AI, okay? And for discussing about the agentic AI application, let's consider that, let's consider that I have a task. And this task is nothing but let's consider I want to probably convert a YT video that I really want to upload to a blog. Okay. To a blog. And now to convert a YT video, YouTube video into a blog, let's say that I have been uploading so many videos. Just imagine if I just create an agentic AI system, which takes my YouTube video and convert that into a blog and publish it in my website. Will, it, will that not be good? It will definitely be good, right? Now here, if I probably see, I can divide this into multiple subtasks. First of all, I will take this YT video. I will convert, I will take the transcript from the YT video. Transcript from the YT video, okay? After considering the transcript from this, my second task will be creating title. Creating title, okay? Third, it can be creating description. Okay, so this will be my third task, creating description. And my fourth task will be writing the conclusion. Let's say, so I've defined this task into four different tasks, right? Four different tasks. Now for the same task, don't you think converting a YT, YT video into transcript, I can create one AI agent. Then similarly, for my second AI agent, I can basically take this transcript and this AI agent should be able to give me the title. Yeah. Yeah. And just to show you how these things will happen. Don't you think I can just go ahead, see this. Okay. See this magic. Okay. So, so what, what I will be doing is that my first task will be that this AI agent will be responsible in getting me the transcript from my YouTube video. Okay. This AI agent will be responsible for creating the title from the transcript that I get. Okay. Then my next agent over here, which will be parallelly will be responsible to probably create the description from this particular transcript. Yeah. And finally, don't you think I can have one more, one more AI agent, which will be responsible in creating the conclusion. Right now here, this is my AI agent one. Let's consider this. Okay. So this is my AI agent one. This is my AI agent two. This is my AI agent three. And this is my AI agent four. Each and every agent can use LLM. It can use prompt. 
to perform its task each each here it can or it cannot it is not compulsory that it needs to use all the llm but since you are working with respect to text related things then obviously we can use llm okay for now this is just like a one kind of workflow so this workflow goes on like this right so first of all i give my yt video url yt video url then this agent is responsible in taking from this and giving the output as transcript now this transcript is sent to all the agents and finally we can combine all these outputs and give my final blog right so what does this basically mean before an ai agent only used to do one task in an agentic ai system so this is my entire complex workflow with respect to my agentic ai system and this is performing this entire task together here every agent is communicating with each other right i can add one more thing over here i can add human feedback human feedback also over here so here what is basically happening ai agents are communicating with each other right i can also make sure to probably before this ai agent let's say this agent is responsible in probably creating a description for creating the description it also wants the title so it will just go ahead this ai agent 2 whatever output it is creating for the title it will give it to the agent 3 and this will take that information and do this so internally you'll be able to see we can also make this agent communicate with each other to solve a complex workflow and finally achieve a goal right so just to understand what is the difference between ai agents versus agentic ai here ai agent is doing only one task in an agentic ai system this ai agents will be collaborating with each other this is really important collaborating collaborating with each other to solve a goal this is really really important to understand so i hope you understood this particular video i hope you liked this particular video this was the basic differences between generative ai versus ai agent versus agentic ai and i hope you are able to understand this okay similar kind of videos i'm also going to come up in this specific series so that you get your fundamental rights i hope you like this particular video this was it from my side i'll see you in the next video have a great day thank you and all take care bye bye